Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Thermomix Easter kitchen. I'm Terry. I'm Suzanne. And we're going to do a hot cross bun cook along. First time we've done something like this. So let's see how it all goes. But let's see who's joined us, where you're joining us from, and uh, pop it in the chat. We'd love to hear where you are from, who's going to be doing and cooking along with us, or have you already got your dough ready? Let's hear from you. You can even send some hearts if you want to. <laughs> green, hearts. green hearts, yeah, green hearts. That'd be nice. That's be nice. Let's just say thank you also to the team we've got behind the scenes who are going to heckle us and keep us on track, which is Zach and Nick with all the technical bits, and then we've got lovely Paige who's going to be answering chat and wonderful Raquel, our customer facing manager actually marketing manager um, so she said it would be okay to do this so we're delighted to have you Terry tell us about what you do here in Thermomix so I am a recipe developer here at Thermomix um, so all of the recipes that you see on cookie do are developed by our team here at head office um, and we have the wonderful job of looking at what we want to write we write the recipes cook them test them eat them, that's very important, okay. um, and then get them all ready either for your cookbooks or the recipes online on Cookie Do. How long does it take to do a recipe? Oh gosh, it can take weeks, weeks? sometimes, wow. because wow. we want to make sure that we have that success guaranteed. So all of our recipes are tested at least three times and sometimes more. Okay. Um, just to make sure that we get it just right. And then we're lucky sometimes because we get to taste as well, but we also do some of the testing. You get some of the guys to do some of the testing. Who do you get that? Does it also community stars? And yeah, yeah, so we have a testing community, including the community stars. Um, so once we're happy with the test, we want to send out to someone else just to do that final check. Also for things like using a different oven from the one that we've got, okay. um, different ingredients, different brands, all of that. So a lot of work that goes behind actually for us being able to press next, all the thoughts that you have to put yes. in. Wow, that's amazing. So where have we got people joining us from? So we've got Pippa from near Mark Harbour. Okay. We've got the Soul Searcher 24 from Hampshire, UK. Hello. And we've got someone high by from Hampshire too. Hi by Hampshire too as well. They're lovely. Welcome Margaret Harbour and Hampshire. Lovely. Hopefully we'll be having some more. I know there's a certain little girl called Lily who's going, I should say hello to. She might be too shy at the moment to say hello, but let's see. She's probably watching with her mum. So we're doing hot cross buns, as I say. Now we posted the recipe, the hot cross bun recipe that we've got is our cookiedo.co.uk recipe. There is also one on Australia, I believe. Yeah. We're also going to have an exclusive from Terry today. She's done some recipe developing. It's She's really ahead of time for it's Easter for next year. <laughs> A nice little idea for you. Um, but what we want to show you is, now you know how to press next. Um, and we've already got a dough made up here and we've also got some doughs that I made last night. So um, I'm going to tip this out and while I'm just bringing that together, Terry, I think it'd be nice to hear. So I've proved those doughs overnight, which mm -hmm. I think is better. I like to put it in the fridge. What's about the maximum time? If people were watching this, of course, you're going to have to let your dough prove. Yes. So we've got things, it's the Blue Peter's of here's one we're doing yeah. earlier and showing you how to do things but what do, what sort of tip do you give for something like this which is an enriched dough i think overnight you can probably do it in the fridge for eight to twelve hours eight to twelve yeah, yeah. anything yeah. over that it might go a bit but it also will depend on your fridge yep okay um and um the ingredients you're using as well yeah <clears throat> okay now what would be now i've taken the recipe exactly as it is yep. and of course with baking you've got to be exact yes particularly with breads and doughs yes. but what about because i've got this at home don't like raisins don't like sultanas don't like mixed peel could we just do what other fillings could we do um and would it just be like for like yeah so you can the in terms of the filling it's very versatile chocolate, chocolate there we are chocolate. i was waiting for that one <clears throat> Yeah, so you could just replace um, the same amount of chocolate chips. Yeah. Um, you could also add, if you wanted to, to sort of to make a chocolate orange one, you could add a bit of orange zest to it. Okay. Um, if you like a certain type of dried fruit, you can. You don't have to use the exact sort of sultanas, raisins, mixed peel. 
you know, you could use dried cranberries or cherries. chop up some Cherry, yep, cherries, 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 dried yeah. apricots, Ooh, yeah. um, anything, anything you want really. Lovely. Okay, but the same quantities, keep to the same quantities yeah. so that we've got that balance of yes. ingredients there. Yes. Now, you can see when I tip this out, a few little bits rogue. We've got rogue raisins and sultanas, but I'm just incorporating them into the dough. And what I'm doing there is just stretching that, and actually I'm doing that underneath, just to make a nice little ball. And gradually, they will be eaten up by the dough. So nothing goes to waste, unless you've got someone around you who'll suddenly be saying, oh, I'll take that. But there we are, we've got that nice dough, and hopefully, you're joining us, you're perhaps making your dough. I don't know, what have people said what they're doing yet? Not yet. Not yet? Yeah, okay, yeah, as I say, I know it's sort of a bit like fruit cakes, isn't it? So some, they go mm -hmm. in and out of fashion. I love fruit cakes, but I'm about the only one in the house that does. Um, so we've got to let that rest yeah. uh, a good couple of hours. Now, what is good today with all this dough We've got our little helpers here at head office, so they're getting some time to make some hot cross buns for later to take home with them. So greased or buttered here a, a bowl, and I'm going to cover that with cling film. For the moment, I'll probably just use that cloth, yep. and that will be enough. Um, we've also got some ideas, which we're going to show you shortly. If you really don't like spiced, you know, the spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, and mixed spice that we've got in there, we've got some ideas. It's a bit like Saturday morning kitchen here, guys, because we're going to have to show you a video in a moment of some other Easter ideas um, that you could do with just a bread dough. And in fact, boiling an egg in your bread bun, actually, which is a really nice idea for Easter. Um, but let's talk about, uh, what about gluten-free? What if people want to do gluten-free buns? What would they be using, like a muffin tin or what yeah. they make? Buns. So there is actually a gluten-free um, recipe from Australia, right? Which I haven't done myself, but it uses millet flour um, and rice flour, right? So quite easy ingredients to find. I think one of the most frustrating things about some gluten-free recipes is when you use all kinds of psyllium husk and a lot of very niche ingredients, um, and um, it is still sort of moldable, so okay. you don't need to use a mold. Okay. Um, and the texture looks wonderful, pretty much what you would expect from a regular one. And I guess there's going to be some, I imagine we're going to have some keen bakers joining us. I don't know if they are already with us, but what about a sourdough starter? How would we use that? You could substitute your yeast yep. with a sourdough starter. Okay. Um, and what you would need to do probably is you would probably need to let it prove longer. Right. A much longer prove, maybe about 8 to 12 hours okay. instead of your regular two to three maybe, okay. um, just because the yeast isn't quite as strong as your shop-bought yeast if you're using a sourdough starter, but it will add a lovely flavour to it yep. and a lovely texture to it as well. Now, I used fresh yeast today, so if you can get hold of fresh yeast, I think that will give, for me, a really nice result because it is an enriched dough, so it does need to work to rise, yeah. and I think fresh yeast, if you can get hold of it, um, bakers do sell them, um, supermarkets you should be able to get hold of them mm. free of charge but even so a bag, if you can get a bag of fresh yeast and make up some other Easter breads as well that would be great. Now we've got some ready made, if I can just ask you to pass that yes. bowl, thank you, it's good having this assistant here. So this has been proving, I don't know how well you can see that, that's an overnight prove so that was made I did stay up rather late last night watching a movie I wanted to see and, and made this at about one in the morning. What Meet Joe Black. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't want a bit of Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do, um, the recipe, so um, if you're following the recipe, it tells you obviously to let it rise um, and then what you want to do is knock it back and knocking back is just knocking out the rise we don't want too much flour on here. Um, and I'm going to cheat. I don't know what you think about this, but actually try and make a log of this. Hmm. Because whenever I try to make bread rolls, I usually have one rogue one that's really big and a few small ones. I mean, it's rustic. It's nice. But I saw a little tip in the magazine of why don't we just make a roll like this and then we can cut off pieces 
because I think this recipe does it say 16 I think it's going to yes, say I think yeah. 16 yes. 16 so which are reasonable sizes so the next thing is I need to find the knife which we have just around the back again a lucky time I've gotten the system we got a question that's a good time for a question while we hide that find the knife Yes, you should be able to use plant-based milk for this, absolutely. And indeed, um, there's butter in this as well. So just replace that with a appropriate uh, vegan spread. So yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. What about savoury? What about savoury hot cross buns? Yeah. Good discussion. That is yeah, that's something I've never heard of. So what would we have in savoury? We could have we could have some feta. We could have we onions. Okay. Uh, we could have a little bit of a masala mix, perhaps, of some of um, some spices. That would be good. So, yeah, I, I dare anybody out there who's brave enough, perhaps, to do something uh, a little bit more, something different with that. So you can see, I'm just making a log because I think this is going to make everybody's life easier to then just cut off pieces Thank you, my lovely Terry. You found the knife. So I just think if we, we, you could do it half, half, perhaps in thirds then, like that. Let's see how many we get like that. Half, one, two. It's probably not going to work my way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you do <laughs> half, we do I half. tend to do half. Yep. Yep, and then half again. Yep. Let's do that. So that's two. Yep. And that's just to show how well the dough's incorporated everything. So let's do two. So then that's four. That's four. And Half we again. Half again. Let's see. I need supervision. <laughs> I'm still going to get odd shaped ones. And then half those and again. And then half again, and then that'll yeah, be 16. Yeah, now we've got those. Okay. What's your best rolling technique? Thank you so much, Raquel. So as I told you that we have got come on shape ones, I don't mind. So would you be shaped we want to get these shaped into little dough. Do you like to yeah, roll so it? I would roll it into a ball and yeah. then just like you did earlier, just rolling underneath so that you've got that lovely round and that nice tight top yes, really. So yes, just exactly. like that. I don't hopefully you can see that guys, how I'm just doing that. And what we'll probably do is um, while we do this and make the little balls up. I'll do just one more just to show you. Um, and we're gonna pop them on the tray because they need to have another prove. But we can then come back um, and show you how to uh, put the cross on. Uh, so hopefully I'll have them all ready for you then. But we're gonna cut now to um, to Anna Alexandrovich and Gosha Ortsik who recorded this a couple of weeks ago from our Oxford branch with some ideas for you, um, great Easter ideas to do with the kids, and as I say, some alternatives if you're not a fan of fruited bread dough. So over to the VT if we can, please. Hello everyone, um, I'm Anna. And I'm Gosha. And we're going to show you today what to do uh, for the Easter, some alternatives if you don't like um, the hot cross buns. Uh, so for today we prepare a milk dough, just a basic milk dough, um, as you can find the recipe on the cookbook. Um, and we're going to play a little bit with that. So, Gosia. Yeah, I'm going to sprinkle it on our baking mat. Don't use too much flour because, um, you know, the dough is perfectly made. Um, so it's actually better when you use a little bit of olive oil on your hands. So then you don't put too much flour into the dough and the dough will stay nice and fluffy when it's baked. So what are you going to do today? I'm going to do some egg nests and they're going to look fabulous. Um, so I put few recipes to show you on the thermomix screen, which I found on the cook too. So um, on uh, the UK platform, you can find the Italian Easter bread. 
So that's really um, a lot of new recipes um, to bake with an egg. So that's what Gosia is gonna show you today. You can do them actually smaller because they're gonna rise a lot. And then um, to put the egg in and um, you're baking that together. So it's just amazing as the eggs, you know, it's nicely, not very hard actually, it's still a bit soft inside. So really, um, really lovely for the breakfast. Um, there is the Easter egg bread nest recipe as well. So please remember that on the cookie dough, you can take the filters off um, and you will see the recipes from the different countries as well. So we've got the almond Easter ship. So again, um, you know, all these recipes, they're really similar to the milk bread recipes. So you need the eggs, uh, you need an egg, milk, um, yeast um, and flour. Uh, so there is lovely almond Easter ship um, recipe to do with the kids, you know, little uh, round shapes um, put together. Yep, yeah. Gosia, you ready? So okay, to so make yeah. sure, so the one. we're taking raw egg yes. and it will go to the oven and it will cook perfectly well in the oven. So to do the nest, we're just playing with the dough like so. Look how easy it is. And then this and the egg inside. Well done, that's Look easy. Look how beautiful <laughs> and easy. <laughs> Great, okay, so let me start with the Easter Bunny. Roll it down so it will have a mm. nice shape. And then for this recipe, I'm actually gonna use the scissors. Um, and I'm gonna cut that on the side, like that. <laughs> and here we go, so that's actually ready. So we've got the ears here, so we can put that here. And in the same way, you can do a hedgehog as well. Yeah, so remember, you know, it doesn't have to be very perfect. We can play with the kit. And then we can just continue a bit more. And that's gonna be. That's so cute. <laughs> ah, that's clever. <laughs> okay, so we also got the egg here, so the spit neck. Just to the give it nice now. glaze, so when we brush it with an egg, it will be nice and shiny with the little bunny and hedgehog. Right, so we are done, and now we're going to put it to the oven. Yes. Oh wow, this looks great. Oh, look at that. So make sure you leave lots of space around because you know that's the yeast bread, the yeast dough. So um, it does grow, as you can see. I touch a bit. So now we're gonna decorate them with a chocolate. I'm gonna show you a magic trick. So that's my bunny. Uh, and take a chocolate, so if you have chocolate drops or it can be just um, chocolate bars. And as my bunnies are still hot, just gonna touch it. And the chocolate melts. <laughs> yeah. That's a And even our hedgehog. That's a nice job for the kids. And also our egg nest, you can color with any color you like, any patterns you like, and just decorate your Easter table. Yeah, so even with the kids, you can use some pens. Um, that will be actually easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you can decorate the eggs, you know, from the cookie dough recipes, make them nice and colorful. And I'm gonna show you what's inside. Now we're gonna see the egg inside. Oh, look wow. at that. Ready for breakfast. Very <laughs> nice. Mmm. Mm, a bit of salt on the egg. Yeah. <laughs> half for you, half for me. <laughs> so, happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. Hope that's inspired you to uh, try some different things. Um, I think cooking the egg in that uh, nest, that would be lovely to do for Easter. Um, I've already got the eggs ready here um, for dyeing, so you could dye the eggs beforehand. Um, and just check out on our, we'll post the link afterwards, um, on Cookie Do. There's some great activities. There's an Easter coloring book as well, isn't there, that you can download. So keep the kids busy over Christmas. And um, hope Easter. Easter, I'm testing you. There we are. It's because we were talking about snowmen. And as I mentioned to you, we've made rather a lot. I don't think you can see this, but it does make actually more than 16 if you want. You can do mini hot cross buns. We were just toying with the idea of naming one Olaf and possibly doing like a cottage hot cross bun. Um, you could get creative here, folks. <coughs> um, we've got rather a lot, but they'll be perfect by size uh, chunks. Yes, so. just make sure that you adjust your oven time. So right. you probably so need... So what would you need to do? Uh, probably just check on them a couple of minutes before okay, what it what says the, in the recipe. Says on there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because they're a bit smaller, they'll cook a little bit quicker. Right, that's good. Now, we, we will leave these to prove, but let's talk about, for me, until I did hot cross buns, I thought... I tried doing individual crosses and it took forever and it really was messy and then I saw it's so easy how you do it. So Terry would you like to explain A what you've done because we've made up a mix here haven't yes. we and we've got some uh, we've got that and then we've got this and I think I've got some scissors here as well. Perfect. I don't know if it's going to be easy to do but this is um, flour Water, water and sugar and sugar yep. okay so a really thick paste yes. because you want it to if it's too thin it will disappear done that one as well so I've tested that for you mm -hmm. you want it nice and thick so that it can stay yeah and you popped it into a piping bag I what have. if you haven't got a piping bag uh, you can just use a freezer bag and then just snip the end just off snip the end off okay yeah. lovely and because it's so thick, actually, even if you didn't have that, you could just use a spoon and drizzle it over. And it would be it just over. quite rustic. Steady, well, yeah, that would be we like very rustic. rustic. We do yes. like rustic, don't we? So, okay, so we're popping that into the bag, and you're going to then cut that top. And you probably need a reasonable size hole. What, about yeah. half a centimetre? Half a centimetre, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so if you have bags like this, great. If not, you can also make bags... Um, is it in the sweet cookbook how you can make your own icing bags? Yes. So if you've got a copy of the sweet cookbook, we've got lots of useful tips and tricks for baking and that, and how to make your own piping bags from non-stick baking sheet, which is great. So you're just cutting off the end then. Yep. Now, we'll probably need to bring this here, and I've got my little babies here. I'll put those there. But shall we put four in a row and just demonstrate yes. how we would do? Because as they prove... Hopefully you can see that, guys. Is that okay? Um, as they prove, they will go into each other. So you're going to have that wonderful effect. You'll be able to break them off, uh, which is really lovely. It looks really nice just out the bakery, <coughs> really. So we've got to leave a little bit of space. So while we're showing you this, because it makes sense to do it now, yep. um, we would normally do this after about an hour's proving. But if you want to just run over, do you want to just show how you would do that? Just perhaps one row that we just demonstrate. Right. So when it's proved, you would then... Yeah, so imagine they've proved that they're kind of touching, so they would be sort of right next to each other. And then you would just... So easy. So easy, that. Yeah. So we've got that, and then you don't have to, well, you can go over it a little bit if you wanted to, but it's slightly, but, but then we would do the same and with that row. And then you would row. do the same the So way. you're going to do all the rows across, yep. and then we would do all vertically. Yep. So that's how you do it. Don't worry that it's going to dribble onto your baking mat or onto your baking sheet. It's fine. It will just bake off. Um, that will be fine. But that's how you do the crosses then. So we're, we're going to leave these. We're going to leave them proving. Now, if you didn't want to bake these straight away, could we freeze them, Terry? Yes, you could absolutely freeze them. You can freeze them before or after baking, actually. I've right. done both. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can, at this point, before... You put any, you any, put topping. any, yep. any topping on it, you could freeze it then. Yep. Um, and then you just need to defrost it in the fridge overnight. Okay. Um, bring it out of the fridge, bring it up to room temperature before you carry on with the recipe. And do the, and continue, the normal. And yep. continue with what you would be yep. doing. Okay. Or you can bake them 
and then let them cool completely and put them in the freezer. Okay, then you can um, just get them and then out. get them out when you want them, and they're wonderful toasted for breakfast. And since we've got rather a lot. <laughs> I got a bit over enthusiastic with cutting and halving. Um, what could we use for leftover hot crust buns? Any ideas, folks? We can make bread and butter pudding. Ah, well, that's a good one, isn't it? That especially, is especially if you've got the chocolate, chocolute ones. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. okay, so leftover bread and butter pudding. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Mm, what else could you do? Toast French toast. French yes. toast. Yes. Oh, French what toast. a good idea. Dip a egg in an egg. Oh, now that I've got to try. Okay. Mm. With homemade butter, of course, mm -hmm. homemade butter, and then, oh yes, okay, so these are some things. What we'd like to do, guys, is see your results posted on our main UK Facebook page. We'd lovely to see what you've been doing, um, has it inspired you to do it for the first time, and, and let's see what results you've got. The other thing I want to mention is that we would love you to help us raise money this year. Um, we've had a fantastic march where we were raising for our global charity, um, which is um, the children's um, uh, SOS villages, uh, particularly for those in Ukraine. But our main uh, charity for the rest of the year uh, here in the UK is uh, Fair Share, and then in Ireland it is Fair Cla Food, food, food cloud. cloud, sorry, not food cloud, a food cloud. Now, we want to donate an amazing 200,000 meals during this year, um, and we would love it if you could help by making a contribution to those great charities. We'll post the links for you to be able to do that so that you can also gift aid it as well. You know, whatever you can spare, um, you know, every pound, every penny will help us achieve that target. So please look out for that link and follow it and please share it um, with your friends and family as well. So we've got this, we're going to get that ready, we're going to uh, leave that cooling. Now we've got the first wonderful little link we've got of this new recipe yes. a year ahead of time. Yes. Okay. So let me introduce you to the hot cross scone. The hot cross scum. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so no Ooh. rising. So what have no. you done here? What have you done? Um, so this is not actually something that I was necessarily planning to do in terms of developing a she recipe for cookie do. It was just something that I wanted to eat. Okay. Um, that's quite often. That's the great thing about my job. I can just think oh, I want to eat this. I'll make it at work and put it on cookie do. Um, so actually, it's really simple. All I did was I took our basic scone recipe from Cookie Do. Okay. I added the spices from the hot cross bun recipe. Um, and same quantities. Yes. Yes, same quantities. Um, okay. And added 150 grams of dried mixed fruit. Okay. Um, you could also do what you would for your um, hot cross buns and use a mixture of raisins, sultanas, chocolate, chocolate, all the same fillings, anything you want to fill it with. Um, and then bake them according to the basic scone recipe. Then I glazed it with the glaze for the hot cross buns with mm -hmm. the marmalade. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done the cross with just, um, I ground some icing sugar, um, mixed it with a bit of water and uh, piped my crosses like that. You could also use melted white chocolate. You could also just use this dough um, yeah. that you would for the hot cross buns. Um, in that case, you would do it before you bake it, whereas this, I iced after I baked it. Right. Um, but they would all work wonderfully. Okay. And for the glaze, just to show you, we've made the glaze up that we'll be using later. So this we got some um, marmalade without any shreds in it. So because that just made it. But you could use apricot jam, I guess. You as could, well. yes. Um, and that's got, uh, is it milk or? Uh, milk, milk yeah. and light brown sugar. Light brown sugar. So yes. that you do, you will glaze once the uh, uh, the hot cross buns come out of the oven, we will post pictures of our results yep. during the day because I think we're going to have several batches being made. Um, but we'll post our results. But we'll glaze those as soon as they come out of the oven, really, yes, isn't when it? They're hot, so yes. you probably a couple of, of coats. Do you think it is yeah. in terms of just to get that nice? Because some of it may just soak in a yeah, bit. Yeah. So um, so you want to do a couple of coats of this, but you use that also. Yes, on the I scones did, yes. as well. I mean, that's a lovely quick recipe, and then you could just serve those. Well, would you now? What would you have? Jam first, cream first. Would you have jam? What would you do? Discuss. Jam first. 
Jam first, okay. So that's the I would maybe one. have it with marmalade. Oh, mm. we've got the bake here. Okay, okay. So Paige says cream first. Cream I'm, first. I'm with you. I yeah. say jam first because it's the heaviest. Okay, okay. Yeah, so <coughs> this will never be resolved, but we'll look forward to some comments there to see what people would be feeling, uh, what they would like to do with their hot cross scones. So, um, game of scones. Um, so we can actually, you could play a game with these, couldn't you? You could actually have noughts and crosses with this if you could. <laughs> um, so, hot cross scones. Um, what other thing? We were talking about just some other enriched doughs, like a brioche dough as well. Um, yeah, so you could take any, to be honest, you could take any sort of bread or dough mm -hmm. recipe that you like. You could make hot cross bagels. You could make hot cross uh, pizza. pizza. Oh gosh, okay, that's going to be controversial. <laughs> that might be a bit too far for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you could take uh, brioche dough. And so also, if you have any dietary requirements, if you want to find a vegan recipe or a gluten-free recipe or a dairy-free recipe, find a dough that works for you. Add those spices, add your filling of choice um, and follow the recipe and you would have a hot cross whatever it is that you want. You could do a loaf, because you can get hot cross bun loaves, can't yes, you? Yes, yeah. yeah. So how would you, because you created the most amazing gluten-free, the artisan gluten-free bread, <laughs> Terry, she did that, um, which is really good because that is something, as you were saying, finding a bread recipe that didn't involve lots of different things that can be quite expensive, yes. or you're thinking, I haven't got that. So um, do check that out if you're looking and you're gluten-free and looking for a great bread recipe that will wow people when they come on the holiday weekend. Um, you could probably do something with that, could you, do you think? Yeah. Probably, if yeah. you wanted to give Just it a little bit of fruit spices, and some yes. spices. So yeah, you can really have a good play around with things there. Um, so there's a hot cross bun, uh, scones. We're yep. gonna be, we'll post some pictures, as I say, of our hot cross buns as it emerges during the day. I've got a question for all of you, which is to check whether all of you watching, you receive our customer newsletter. So um, our customer newsletter, you have to opt in to receive it. So you'll need to go, if you don't receive it, you'll need to go to www.forvec.co.uk. That's Forvec, V-O-R-W-E-R-K. And I think, is it down at the bottom in the green section? Right yep. down at the bottom, I think it says uh, newsletter or join our our newsletter I can't remember the exact form of words but that's where you can then subscribe because you're a customer or you may have inquired you may not you may be watching and may not be ready to buy yet but hopefully we're we've sealed the deal today that you say I really need one of those um, but particularly for our customer you know if you want to sign up you need to sign up so we don't automatically um, enroll you on our mailing list so don't miss out on that because we have useful information we had some great links last night it went out last night so get in touch with your advisor um, if you haven't got a copy I'm sure they'll be happy to forward a copy to you um, as well to read up on the links as I say there's the Easter um, coloring book that you can download um, and on cookie do itself we have got what we've got we got Reggie Wellington, did you say? And roast leg of lamb. And roast yes. leg of lamb. Yes, of course. We've got those recipes for you to try out. We have got a lovely link we'll post um, about making and dyeing your own eggs with natural yes. food colouring. So red cabbage, onions. Yes. Is it matcha tea? I think one of the other mm. ones. So you know, get some white eggs. I'm lucky I've got a farm near to me where you get some white eggs. But check out in the supermarkets there and. Um, do your own colorings. You can actually, there's a nice little uh, video showing you how you can make patterns on that, or you could just get markers. Um, so you could be decorating and making your own. And of course, you know, there's lots of chocolate recipe ideas out there. So yeah, um, <laughs> that we could be doing for Easter. What have we got as sweet treats? What did we mention in the newsletter on sweet treats? I'm gonna test them now just to see if they remember. I'm trying to desperate room. I think we did do some meringue nests. Was that mentioned, yes. the meringue nests? Yes because eggs, egg whites, you're gonna have a lot. You might be making some pastry, yeah. save, and of course you can freeze egg whites, can't you? Yes, absolutely can. So I always freeze if I've got egg, leftover egg whites. I'll freeze them in twos if I can, um, because there's a great amaretti biscuit recipe I like to do, and that's two egg whites. Um, so you could freeze them, but of course, obviously, great thing, make some nests, make some own egg nests uh, today. Make up some meringue um, and pipe them, make them into shapes, and then you could fill them with well, your own chocolates, chocolate eggs, 
anything else. Milk chocolate bark. There's a nice Berry. chocolate mm. berries. It could be healthy. Yeah, we could go on to. <laughs> we, could we get pavlova? We Absolutely. were just going with chocolate. We're going chocolate because <laughs> I'm just you know I'm on to that. So yeah. Berries and Berries and chocolate and fruit, yeah, absolutely, generally. So whatever yeah. takes your fancy. Have we got any questions from our viewers? Sorry, we haven't got any questions, but we've got Catherine, Lily, Nicola, and Elizabeth all wanting to try the pot muscone. Lovely, okay. And Elizabeth likes adding some spice to muscone for Christmas. Yeah, okay. And then back to the jam and cream today, okay. Catherine, Lily, and Aloma both said cream. So okay, you're, you're, you're outnumbered, yeah, but winning. that could change because we'll see what any other comments we get on this actually when it's posted because obviously you can watch this again. Um, so hello to everybody, thanks all of you for, for contributing. Um, I think on our topic of just a single hot cross bun, we've covered quite a lot this morning. Hmm. Are there any things we need to mention again that we've missed? No? No. Yeah, Terry? Where do they find the rest? Where do they find the recipe? That is good. So for the hot cross scones, exclusive, I'm going to get Terry just to say this is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then you may need to wait before it's actually available on as a hot cross scone recipe. Yes. I don't think that was the original that wasn't plan. The plan. It was just. But there you are. That's how the best, best laid plans. Um, that's how the best ideas come out. We can put it in the comments. We'll put it in the comments for you. So some ideas for that because it is nice and quick. If you're not waiting to write or you haven't got time, yep. well, suddenly people arrive. Mm. They do that and you suddenly think, what am I going to do? Okay, you can do the hot cross scones. Um, I think, as I say, that's it for us really in terms of all things hot cross buns. We will, we will photograph and catalogue our efforts in terms of what we're doing. Um, and uh, post them for you and I'd like to say thank you for joining if you're joining us later I hope this has been useful for you a bit of fun let us know what else you'd like to see ask some questions because we want to help you to get using your Thermomix even better than you already are um, and I'd like to say thank you Terry because thank I couldn't you for do inviting it without, me. without you um, thank you to the team here to um, Zach to Nick to Paige to Raquel um, and more importantly, thank you. Have a wonderful Easter and do check out those charities and see what help you can provide for them. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.